Hi, welcome back to Metal Rules TV, where the underground meets the playground. I'm Matt Givens. He's I'm, African. I'm Jeff Rappaport. <laughs> I'm Rob Rappaport. Last night. Gary Last night. Rappaport. <laughs> Throat Rappaport. <laughs> Actually, I did vomit. <laughs> so, in the news, I just threw up in my. <laughs> Aerosmith has a new DVD. Who? Aerosmith. Yeah. They new Lightning DVD. Strikes, baby. <laughs> Back in the day. They have a new DVD coming out called Rock for the Rising Sun. Interesting. It follows the band on the tour uh, in Japan. I was just going to say, it's got to be a oh, least an East ripoff, I hear. More than anything, it demonstrates the Japanese fans' love affair with Air Aerosmith and their music. Hmm. Well, they are on Sony Records, I believe, so... There you go. Perfect fit. Oh, Sony Records! <laughs> Perfect fit. I like Aerosmith. I think they're cool. For what they did. I, I took a, a little gander at that uh, new CD they let, let out, and... Uh, it's definitely Aerosmith. It's definitely got that bluesy twang to it. A little duet with... Poon that. twang? Right. You know, a little twang twang, a little Tony here and there, but um, kind of like a trademark Aerosmith tone. And uh, a little duet with Carrie Underwood and stuff like that. It was... You know, it's Aerosmith to me. It's... Right. It, it, it's... They have the ballads, they have the, the rock and roll songs, a little up-tempo. They did a G.I. Joe song, didn't they? For the... Really? I don't, know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's not my cup of tea, but it is but it is Aerosmith, so I'm sur sure for all the Aerosmith fans out there, it would... It would I like some of, the, some of the commercial Aerosmith stuff, but for the most part, I like the older stuff. Yes! Right. That was, that was Lightning Strikes. But I still... I didn't hate the commercial then. stuff. I love like I love old Aerosmith like Toys in the Attic mm -hmm. before that rocks all that but stuff. But you could do some love in an elevator. So right? yeah, like because I grew up with that. You know what I mean? Like I was still. It's just burned in your you head. Did a little too. crying. Yeah, I was right. crying when I met you. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> about, about that's when they kind of lost me. When they started to get the, the professional songwriters involved. Right, and right. Like, and they held them yeah. things from their microphone stands. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like Rat did. The but, like, but like through the Pump album, like Love in an Elevator. Yeah. yeah like, well, if you remember, I, I can hang with that. If you remember my wedding. The uh, bridal party uh, song was uh, the song from Armageddon. I don't oh, oh, um, I don't want. Did they came out to in the reception? I don't miss a thing. Yeah, yeah, the, the wedding party. I don't came know, out I don't yeah. that. I was probably hey, the third They've done a lot of great things yeah. in music for sure. You know. Yeah. Um, no. It's just so it's tricky, I think, for some of these bands that are. Can I ask one question? Did the camera go off? I thought I heard it go. Nope. Or this is me. You know, when a Please. band has had what such a, a long, long career, and they're, and they're, you know, they're getting up there. Yeah, that's how, do, how, how do you how do you recreate the magic that you've and the success that you've had in the past? You know, Viagra. Oh God, Viagra. It's awesome. Fucking Viagra. Viagra. Think, think about it. And like what they did, you know, with, with their latest album. From you know what I heard when I sampled it, it's. They're doing their formula, and, and, and it's working. It's just I, I just don't hear any of those hits that we grew up loving, you know? Yeah. A couple of years back, and uh, by a couple of, it might have been like almost a decade, really, they did a, a co-headlining tour with Kiss, I remember. Right. right. The drummer of my band at the time was a big Kiss fan, so he wanted to go, and I was like, yeah, we'll check it out. Yeah. And Kiss played first, so we got to see their set. And then they were, they were like debating whether to stay for Aerosmith. Right. Like, all right, maybe. And you stayed, and you loved and they, it. And uh, they well, they opened with like with the title track from Poison the Attic. So we're like, all right, all right, not bad. And then they played like crying something from Pump. I don't remember what it was. We're like, all right. And then they went into Pink, and we're like, all right, we're out of here. Right, right. right. <laughs> they were like, all right, I can't hang. That loose shit quick. Yeah. Last yeah. Time, I saw them. I think last time they were with Ted Nugent. Nice. Ted okay. is the man. Ted Nugent yeah. and Aerosmith. Always a show. Play Always a show. Ted's a great. That was a great show. It was a co-headlining tour, Ted Nugent and there. That's Aerosmith. a great co-headlining <laughs> billing. Yeah, right? and I really enjoyed that show. I can't remember what year it was. If it was, if I wasn't with the drum, I probably would have stayed, like checked out the rest of Aerosmith, even right. though I, I don't want to hear Pink. But he was like, I was like, all right, that's good. Right, right, you're tired. It's yeah, gonna work sure. tomorrow. <laughs> I wouldn't spend money to see Aerosmith. But you like them though, right? You like pickles. I think he actually got the tickets free from a radio station, so we didn't. I like Aerosmith's greatest hits. Sweet Emotions is a good song. The classics. 
Yeah, that's all. I actually love Round and Round. That's a great song. I like Big Ten Inch. Yeah, that's Record of my favorite. That's well, the thing is, talk about my big I, I have a. <laughs> you know, when, <laughs> when you had a gag motion. You know, MTV <laughs> early days, you know, like my first, my very first memory of uh, MTV is uh, a police video. Um, uh, I was, forget, wasn't uh, the Buggles? Well, I didn't see the very first video. I didn't see that. I remember April Wine? They used to play all right, the time. Right, April Wine. I remember April Wine. The Def Leppard, they used to play at Pyromania. Uh, uh, yeah. High and Dry, rather. High and Dry? Yeah. yeah that was great. That was rocking back in the day. Bring it on the heartache. So, that was rocking, too. So, um, but Lightning Strikes by Aerosmith was a video. One of the first videos I saw on MTV, and I was just like, nice. that's like, as, that's as straight as hard as you can get. You know, like, that's the shit. Oh, yeah. I hope my parents don't catch me watching this. You what, know, what, yeah, Aerosmith is actually the first rock record I ever bought. I don't know nice. if you knew that or not, man. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. First, first Which record one? I ever bought was Pyromania, 1983. Nice. The first record I ever bought was the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Nice. nice. Because I love that movie. I still do. Still, wrong with that, still love that movie. Still love the music. Mine's still love the music. So that's right. But uh, the first rock record I bought, I'd seen Sgt. Pepper's. Lonely Hearts Club. Right. So their version and of Aerosmith that. did come together, which I thought. Right, was, right. That was like my. I would yeah, that actually. Pretty good, yeah. I would actually say that's my first introduction. This is a lot of people don't know this. This might have been my first introduction to hard music. Right. Nice. Okay, cool. I heard that era. I was like, wow. It was like, they look so evil and scary. Right. Now it looks like it's almost silly. Right, yeah. right. But at right. the time, it was so. Right, yeah. They were like so, so demonic and scary. And I was like, oh, who Especially is this? Especially amongst right. the rest of the people in that. Thing. Yeah, so right. I bought Dream, <laughs> Dream On was my first uh, Aerosmith record. I think it was called. I think the album was called Dream the, On. It's self titled, actually, the first album. It has Just Dream Aerosmith. Dream yeah. On. Yeah, all right. That's the album I have. It's like, they're like on a cloud or something. Yeah. It's just called Aerosmith. Right. Yeah, that's the first record I ever, first rock record I ever played. Right. Because they're like, this is probably our first and last record, so we'll just go with another title. It's yeah, called it's, Aerosmith. But it took off. Shake the dice. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, think, I think my second one was the Gene Simmons solo record. Oh, really? Like, really? But I have to say, yep. if Aerosmith was the first, where did Black Sabbath, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath come in? When you opened up the LP... And you've seen a chick laying in a glass coffin with a glowing cross. That was the sickest fucking album ever as a little kid, dude. I opened that shit up. My mom was like, what the fuck is that? I said, I don't know, but she's fucking glowing. I don't know, but what's this And you heard pants? all yeah. that fucking music, Black Sabbath rip, dude? Fuck. Irv Smith, they didn't touch Black Sabbath back then, man. They that never was did. different, you know? Was, I know, yeah, but, even, but when you think about being a little kid and what you grew up on, right. and that's what y'all are talking about, Irv Smith, this and that. No. I actually remember, it's funny, like, you might remember the kiss thing is, when I was in, in sixth grade, um, I lived in Connecticut, uh, Buffalo. Pennsylvania. I lived in, I lived in Puxton, <laughs> Phil. Yeah, and, and uh, I... Uh, my friends put on a Kiss concert to school. Nice, nice. And I worked as um, like a like a like kind of like the doorman guy, like that puts people in a, the usher. Oh, usher. Yeah. I worked as an usher, like welcome to this Kiss show. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah. put on a Kiss show. This is that we were in like sixth grade, whatever it was. And we, and like I remember like a shitload of kids came, and they were all dressed up in the thing. And I remember like some picture of the pic I drew. I used to draw a bunch of pictures of Kiss. Right. And I had him hung up on my. Uh, like you know, like a bulletin board, dude. That I drew my buddy. My buddy. I didn't know that. Kiss concert. I never told you before. Yeah, no, I don't heard of it. Before. Yeah, it's a very early. I'm not a huge Kiss fan, but in the yeah. beginning, that was like because that's all there was. Yeah. Remember, remember, I got into metal before there was really metal. Dude, my Kiss buddy Rick and I used to get a poster board from from the hardware store or from the <coughs> pharmacy and go home after school and draw draw our version of the Kiss stage. What sort of props they would have. You know, just we would draw the concert. You know, yeah. It's just I got Kiss Dynasty. I just look at the cover like those guys are fucking the shit. You know, like, mm. and it's like the Dude, song anybody is, that that drool blood and breathe fire when you're a little kid. Exactly. Right. Fucking rule, dude. Your parents yeah. hated it. Right. You were like <laughs> fucking Eddie, man. Yeah, you know what? Fuck you. Me. I wasn't right. really into Fucking the music. Asshole. Right. Like, Neither was I back then. I just, just the image. Just like know? watching this guy with the blood and <laughs> yeah. like the fire. I actually like the music. Now. And a big cool. fucking cock. Yeah. Yeah. with diamonds yeah. on it. Yeah. You were like, fucking hey, dude. You're a fucking giant, dude. <laughs> yeah. Roll, dude. Fuck all the... I, I, when I, when I, when I, the Ted Nugent's the one that, when I heard Ted Nugent, that's what really got me into heavy music. Right. 
And then, then when I heard Iron Maiden, that was all over. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but, Iron Maiden, but, fuck. But it all started very slowly. Like I said, like probably my first, Aerosmith is my first, was my first taste of heavy music right. from that awful Sgt. Yeah. Pepper's remake. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it was, uh, it was who we're going to see tomorrow, uh, Twisted Sister. That's uh, right. Eight that's years old. That's pretty awesome. Stay Hungry album. I remember, I was, you know, my mom... The price. Especially over the summer. I was like, a senior in high school when that came out. Like, oh, I've always been kind of a night out. I would man. stay up and my mom would let me watch Friday Night Videos. I right, right. And we're not going to take it was on one. I'm like, Twisted Sister, what is this? I was expecting nuns or whatever. Yeah. Or like some kind of like Sister Sledge kind of Right, right. And it's, it was just changed. These guys look fun. And it was like you were saying with the kiss, like the, yeah. like the image. I was like, what is They're all like right. dressed like they're in the wasteland and they're wearing right. makeup, but it's not like a hot chick. It's like a bad Yeah, right, 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 right. Like, what's going like on? Horrible like, transvestite. Like, so I was right, like, can right. I please buy this record? Yeah. My mom's like, well, I don't know. She's, yeah. But my, my mom's actually pretty cool. Like, she grew up on like Led Zeppelin and, and Alice Cooper and stuff. Right. So she was kind of like, she liked the music. And Slayer, like, right? Yeah, totally yeah. Slayer, Venom. She was. I, I, in fact, she was sacrificing something to the She's Dark Lord fan. Right. at the time. You know, she was like, Satan, I praise you. I'm going to, you know, take this virgin blood. And uh -huh. I'm like, Mom, Mom, can I buy this record? What? Right. But no, so she, you know, they let me buy the record. She said, I want to read those lyrics. But she actually liked, because, you know, that, that Street Justice song that's on yeah. there. Yeah. They're talking about, like, the guy that Street wants to She actually kind of liked that. She's like, oh, that's good. They're talking about... You know, somebody that hurts kids catching him and, and punishing him. He's like, you can, you can listen to this. Well, this show's going to be fun tomorrow. It's like, pro but, police yeah. officer. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, what so, a great lineup for tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be so awesome. Oh. By the time you guys see this, it'll, it'll pass. But. Yeah, but we're excited. So, Aerosmith. So, Aerosmith. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. influential. Yeah, Last in the test of time. Yeah. Think about it. Yes. A lot of respect. Doing it. And, I like, and I like Steven Tyler yes. when he's an American Idol. But I'm probably not going to check this, <laughs> this DVD out. I probably won't watch it either, but uh, I have a lot of respect for the band. Yeah, I'm still going to listen to my copy of Toys in the Attic periodically because it's a great album. I did listen to the new album, and while it's good, I won't buy it, but it's Aerosmith. So if you love Aerosmith, yeah. go get it. But yeah. Asian people love you, so this should be good. There you go. Oh. Oh. That's what happened on Aerosmith. Cold pay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sweet emotion. You talk about things, but nobody can. Suck my big 10-inch. Record.